Barry. We talking short money today. We RJ Barry. Tell me she was quarantined. RJ Barry. Barry. One, two. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Make some noise one more time. Here we go. Salute to Nick Station on this Tuesday afternoon, man. CP the franchise checking in from the Puma flagship store, Midtown Manhattan, New York City. And I'm with a special guest. You guys know who it is, man. Number nine for the New York Knicks. The Maple Mamba in the building. RJ Barrett, the franchise. The franchise, we in here, man. We in here heavy. Make some noise one more time for RJ, man. All right, man. Well, let's kick it off. First and foremost, man. Thanks for coming on Knicks Fan TV, man. It's, it's been a long time coming. The, the fan base has been anxious to have you on the platform. So thanks for coming on, bro. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So we're here to first and foremost celebrate the, uh, the release of your first Puma player edition, the Fusion Nitros that made different. Um, talk a little bit about the details on the shoe, the design process, and, and your involvement in it. Well, yeah, we kind of wanted to, um, you know, for my first PE, kind of do something that's, you know, closer to me. So that's what, with the two different colors, um, the red, the red's obviously, you know, for Canada, that's where I'm from. Yeah. So um, that's always close to me. And then on the other side, the blue is for Duke. So okay. Okay. I got those two places. Yeah. Um, and then, so the, the gold, the gold, uh, the gold tips on the laces and the gold on at the side are just, you know, it's for really for a championship, a championship mindset. Championship mindset. You heard him. Championship mindset. Let's go. Yeah, man. Always, you know, always trying to, uh, always trying to win. You know, so that's what that is. And then, um, you know, we got the we got the maple leaf in both in both colors, and um, and obviously number nine because, you know, that's the number I wear for the New York Knicks. So, there gotta goes. have that on there. Um. On the inside, it got written on the bottom. It has, uh, you know, has made different written in there. And um, that's just because, you know, that's my mindset. That's that's how I wake up every day. That's why I think of myself, you know, just I took a kind of a, a different road to, to just get here, to get to the league. And um, I, I kind of said it before, it's really just for everybody, you know. Uh, whatever you want to do in life, like, you got to have a, a different mindset to achieve it. There's so many people in the world. What's going to set you apart? What's going to make you different? Whether it's me, I felt like I've always felt like I haven't been the most talented player. So I feel like I've always had to work harder than everybody to kind of get where I am. So, uh, you know, that's really what the, the made different mindset is all about. Yes, well said, man. And I think it really fits you because, you know, in your three years in the league, my, my impressions of you, obviously, I don't know you, but from what I see on the court and, and your demeanor, it's, it's the confidence, the drive. You never get too high, never get too low, make or miss. You have the same even keel. And I mm -hmm. think that's very important, especially in terms of this town and, and mm -hmm. being successful. And so well, where do you think those traits came from? You know, your confidence, your drive, and, and, and you know, your will to win. No, I think my confidence just comes from the amount of work I put in. You know, this, you know people don't know, people don't see, fans don't get to see, like, how much work we really put in on a, on a daily um, so that's where my confidence comes from. I think my, my work ethic, you know, that definitely comes from my, my family, yeah. uh, my parents, you know, just all the work that I, I seen them do, whether my mom goes to work all day and then, then takes me, drives me an hour to practice and back. So, you know, uh, stuff like that. And then, um, I'm just, I might be one of the most competitive people, you know, that I know, yeah. like, I'm just trying to, I don't know, I'm trying to beat you at everything, you know, no matter what it is. So uh, that's. That's kind of the trait that I think I like the most. That's why you kind of see me, you know, so demonstrative on the court. And um, it's because I care. Like, I don't want anyone to ever have the upper hand on me, you know. And uh, I feel like that kind of, you know, just it really helps the team, gets the team fired up. I feel like the fans, you know, I feel like the, that's what the fans like about me. You know, I just like I give it my all every time I step out on the court. 
Yeah, that's 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 what it is, man. And make some noise for RJ's parents, man. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Barrett, no no doubt about it. And as you mentioned, you know, your parents really sacrificed a lot to, to get you where you are and, and you know, along your journey. What what is that what does it mean to you to have them here with you and with you on draft night and you sign the extension? What does it mean to you to have them really kind of be in cruise control and kind of enjoy it right now? Man, it means, you know, it means a lot. Uh, just I'm happy that, you know, I'm able to make make them proud just because, you know, I, now that I'm getting older, it's also like I just I see how much they sacrificed, you know, to help me get here. So, um, you know, I always got to pay back the respect. That's what's up, man. And, you know, I was at Summer League this past July in Vegas, and I was watching uh, I was watching Pacers and Pistons. I was checking out Matherin, and a lot of Team Canada was in there, SGA and those guys was in there. I'm standing by the door. Somebody tapped me on the shoulder. It was your pops. But Rowan Senior, man, so big up your pops as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, listen, you know, making it to the NBA was always a dream of yours. Mm -hmm. You're here celebrating the first pre, uh, play edition sneaker release. Is this everything that you dreamed of? Yeah, man, this is uh, this is big time, you know, just to have the city come out. Like, you know, I, I appreciate the city so much. All the love they, they show me as a, you know, from when I was a 19-year-old kid coming in. Um, it's always been a lot of love, so... You know, that, that really means the most to me, just to see everybody here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, we all know the influence that your parents have had on your career. We know that Steve Nash is your uncle and your godfather. You went to a lot of elite institutions at the high school mm -hmm. level, whether it's Montverde or at Duke in college. But when you got to the league, your rookie year, was there one player or one moment that really humbled you that said, you know, this is the big boys league, I got to... I gotta step it up. There was, there was two that happened early on in the season. I think it was like I, I really think it was back-to-back -back games. Uh, Jason Tatum and Kyrie Irving both hit game winners on me. Um, so that was that was tough. That was a welcome to the league moment. Um, also, Brad Bill. I remember Brad Bill dropped twenty on me in the first half in a preseason game, and I couldn't do anything about it. So those were some moments for me. I was happy I was able to get Jason back. So. We'll see. <laughs> That's a fact. That is, that is a fact. A absolutely. Now, along your journey, has there been, you know, a current or former Nick or an NBA player that's really been a mentor to you along your journey? Uh, well, you know, Alan Houston, he, he works for the Knicks, so I, I kind of see him every day, you know, talking to him all the time. Just, you know, he was a, he was a person that, that really – that dealt with this, you know, stuff as well, and and was a great player for the Knicks. So he yeah. he's been helping me a lot. Big up to H two O, man. That was one of my favorite Knicks for sure. Um, another one of your goals this year was is to be an All Star. Mm -hmm. You know, how do how do you feel? What do you feel like you need to do to to really get there? Nah, man. You know, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to get in the conversation. I'm ready to you know really really showcase what I could do. Every year I've been getting better, so there's no better time than now. Absolutely, man. And along with Maple Mamba. Make the all-star team. We got to call you Star Jet. You know, we are live. Knicks Fan TV live from the Puma flagship store, CP the franchise, RJ Barrett. A bunch of happy Knicks fans over here begging them up. Absolutely. Also want to shout out, uh, shout out Puma NYC. Shout out to Puma Hoops for having us here, man. If you guys have not been to this store, two floors, dope merch all over the place, man, from basketball, track and field, racing, you name it. So make sure you guys come on down. The customer service is excellent. they definitely been taking care of me since I've been here. So shout out to Puma NYC and Puma Hoops as well. <laughs> um, to talk a little bit about, you know, your, your off-season workouts. You've been working with Drew Hanlon for about six plus years now. How has that been going out in LA? Man, it's been, uh, it's been great. You know, um, Summer is really where you can, if, if you decide to do it right, you can really add things to your game. Um, so, you know, going in there, working out, and being able to see, like, other guys or being able to work out with, you know, other guys there. Like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool to see because, you know, you don't really get to see everyone during the year as much. So, like, being able to see, like, Joel and B work out or Jason Tatum work out, you know, play against those guys a little bit, you know, it's, uh, it's cool. So, and uh, anything in particular that you've been working on, or um, you know, I've been, really been working on just stuff off the dribble, moves off the mm -hmm. dribble, you know, make, being able to make shots off the dribble, and uh, and my finishing. You know, I think like those two areas, be able to clean those up, uh, will 
you know, help me and, and the team out a long way and just, like, making free throws. I'm making free throws this year, <laughs> man. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And, listen, you got to the line quite a bit last year, man. You were very aggressive on, on your drives. I mean, was that by design, or do you feel like you were getting more the, the benefit of the calls? Because we kind of felt like your first couple of years, the refs weren't really giving you the benefit of the whistle. That's just being a young guy, you know, I, I, but I was getting fouled a lot for, you know, just a young guy when I came in. But um, I've always been a guy that's, that's known how to, how to get to the line, um, as well as I just go to the paint so much, I'm about to get fouled at some point. So, yeah. Absolutely. Now, you had a 46-point game against the Heat, which was f fantastic. And after the game, Jimmy Butler said you could be the face of the Knicks. He had a 36-point game against the Lakers, and LeBron James said it, it's a different light and a different heat when you play for the Knicks, and I think he's handled it extremely well. What does it mean to you to, to have that admiration, number one, from arguably the greatest player to ever play and another superstar in a Jimmy Butler? You know, it was, uh, it was, it was really cool. You know, um, Jimmy's a guy that I've, I've been looking up to, especially the past you know, couple of years, just – his story and the way he's done things. Um, so I appreciate that. And, you know, LeBron's always been my favorite player um, from when I was a kid. So, yeah, that, that recognition was cool. That's nice. Do they give you any advice when you're on the court? I mean, Jimmy looks like he's trying to take your head off. But yeah. are, are they giving you any advice while you're out there? I think Jimmy probably talks to me the most, honestly, during the game. Yeah, like, because, cause, I mean, he, he really knows how to get fouled. Like, Jimmy will just get you on these little cheap things all the time. And then, and then he'll laugh, and then he'll be like, all right, I'll tell you how to do that later, like type thing. So, Yeah, you can definitely see it on the court. And now on the flip side, you have to guard these guys. And when I was doing my research, uh, bballindex.com, they do a lot of advanced metrics. And one of the metrics they came up with was um, matchup defense. And they said that your defensive matchups was harder than 95% of the league. So talk about, you know, the challenge of, of really being a two-way player, especially on the defensive end when offensively, you know, you, you get downhill, you play a very physical brand of basketball. Talk about that challenge. Competing, man. Um, I love the challenge, you know, offensively, defensively. Uh, I love the challenge. Um, just, you know, if I'm able to, to score points and help the team that way, but then also help, you know, try to lock down the other team's best player, you know, that, that puts us in – a better position, a better position to win. So, um, yeah, got to compete and uh, got to love the challenge. Absolutely. Now, what, what would you say is um, what makes a, a Thibodeau defense successful? You know, you guys finished fourth in the league or top five in the league two years ago, finished about 11th in the league last year. What do you think makes uh, a Tom Thibodeau team defense so successful? I think it would make, honestly, any team successful in that way is just being connected, one, being connected, knowing what you're doing, you know, trusting that if you mess up or if you do something, you know that a guy has your back. And then um, really just, like, having no egos. You know, defense is not a – it's not an easy thing, especially in the league. Like, it's not an easy thing to do. So um, having no egos and, and wanting to do it, that, I mean, that goes a long way. Absolutely, man. And once again, we're talking to R.J. Barrett, Knicks Fan TV Live from the Puma flagship store. Salute to everybody in the chat. And everybody in the chat, you guys got to do two things for me. Two things for me. You guys know the deal, man. Number one, hit that thumbs up button for your boys. And number two, whenever we have a live guest, we always salute them in the chat. So throw a number nine in the chat right now to salute our guy, R.J. Barrett, the Maple Mamba in the building. Couple, couple more for you, RJ. Uh, in the offseason, you know, Knicks uh, went out and signed Jalen Brunson. What did you think of that pickup, and, and how do you see him helping the team? You know, uh, Jalen Brunson's been a, he's been a really good player for uh, a long time. I really thought that he was able to show that, you know, in the playoffs this year. So, that's, I mean, he's, he's a really good addition for us, for sure. Okay. All right. And, um, you know, the Knicks fans, they're very enthusiastic about this Knicks young core. You know, you have about 10 players or so under 25 years or old, uh, and younger. What, what, do you, what do you think about that young core that you guys have, that young group yourself? Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes, Obi, Cam Reddish, Mitchell Robinson, the Block Nest Monster. Man, you know, we, uh, the young guys, you know, we, we really, we work hard, man. That's, that's what I'll say. You know, we work hard and we're connected, so... Um, yeah, you know, uh, 
I've, I've been vibing with those guys since, since day one. I think, you know, it works really well. So we'll yeah. see. It's going to be an interesting season indeed. And, um, you know, what do you see as you see the RJB here, the Puma here? What, what do you think about your brand and, and how do you want to build that out, you know, for your future? Um, just as my brand, you know, just um, I just I am who I am. I don't try to be, you know, anybody else or do anything, anything different. Uh, I just want uh, I'm always been, you know, big family guy type type person. So. That's what it is, and I, I love to give back to the to the community. You know, any any way I can, whether it's my time, you know, um, hooking people up with shoes, like whatever it is, um, I love to do that. Um, uh, and speaking of that, um, you know, just just for the Knicks fan, I know we're celebrating my my first PE right now, but yeah. I just want Knicks fans to know that I got something in the works for y'all. So. Whoa, you heard him. You, you heard him. That's what it is, man. And any final thoughts to the fans or? Nah, just appreciate y'all, man. And let's keep going. Uh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So listen, man, best of luck to you this season. Stay healthy. Do your thing. We're rooting for you, man. Thanks again. Great appreciate job. You, Great God. job. Sure. RJ Barrett, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise. <laughs>